Hello, I recently bought and changed this CPU fan. All of a sudden, I get no display. Everything worked perfectly fine beforehand. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. And in this video, we're gonna try to fix it for free. Whoa, 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 hey, what are you, what are you, what are you doing in my shot? Go on, get. Sorry. This rig's sporting an Intel Core i7 7700K, so seventh gen Intel. It's about seven years old at this point. That is quite old. The graphics card though is a lot newer, an MSI RTX 3060. There's also a 750 watt Corsair power supply in here. We'll figure out what specific model in a few and 16 gigs of Vengeance LPX DDR4. Now there's a bit of a backstory with this rig that wasn't disclosed in the description. The owner met with me in person, of course, to drop the system off. And he told me that in the process of upgrading a CPU cooler to what it is now, a slim form factor tower cooler from Thermalrite, he removed the socket retention mechanism. That's the thing that holds the CPU in the socket to ensure proper contact between the pins and the pads underneath the substrate. He was under the impression he had to remove this mechanism in order to install the thermal right cooler, which of course is not actually the case. He was a bit confused by that. There's a lot of very sensitive pins inside these Intel sockets that you really don't want to mess with if you don't have to. Uh, so I think we might be dealing with a defective socket. Not sure if something was damaged. He assures me that it looked fine when he reinstalled the CPU and reinstalled the cooler. But of course, the nature of troubleshooting, we're gonna have to verify that with our own eyes here in the office. So this should be a fun one. If it's not socket related, well, that might actually be a good thing. Only time will tell. I hope you'll stay with me. Say goodbye to Thermal Paste with Thermal Grizzly's Phase Sheets. These pads rely on a phase change material that allows them to liquefy during operation and effectively dissipate heat like paste without all the mess. In a nutshell, these are designed to last longer than normal paste thanks to thermal expansion behaviors around CPU and graphics card coolers and the resulting low viscosity of these sheets once they're up to temperature. This keeps more of the material from being, quote, pumped out after each thermal cycle, which is why they tend to last longer than traditional paste. But don't worry, they're easy to to install and won't break the bank. So consider giving them a try for your next PC build. Learn more about Thermal Grizzly phase sheets by clicking the link below. Hi there, my name's Greg and welcome to Fix or Flop. In this playlist, we attempt to fix viewers' computers in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. We don't charge for labor, we don't charge for replacement hardware if it comes to that. And the reason is because of your viewership. You're the reason why we have uh, third-party sponsors that wanna you know, support our channel. You're the reason why we make money from YouTube AdSense. It doesn't make any sense for us to charge owners of rigs who are gracious enough to let us borrow their systems to film videos like these to upload to sites like YouTube. Now, if you recall from the description of this owner, the rig apparently powers on, but doesn't send a picture to a monitor. Maybe it's posting, maybe it's not, but I have a good feeling that if there's actual socket damage here, the system, of course, is just not going to post at all. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, so far so good. All of the fans are spinning. We do have, looks like, do we have any LEDs in this motherboard? I don't hear anything settling down though. So the fan curve is still kind of ramped up at the same, RPM that the uh, thing started at. Usually it'll tone itself down a bit if the system actually posts its one indicator. It's not always gonna be that way, but it does sound like the system is not actually posting. So I'm probably going to do something I don't normally do to start off a video like this. I'm gonna look directly at the socket. I wanna look at the CPU because I know that that's where things were messed with. And according to the owner, everything was working perfectly fine before he touched it. Usually at this point, we'd clear the CMOS, you know, do things that only take a few seconds, but uh, I'm fairly confident that we've got an issue here with the cooler. I mean, it doesn't make sense why it would be anything else if again, the only thing messed with was in this area. This goes without saying, assuming it's something we can quickly fix, will of course repaste. And I'll probably move the fan back to this side so it can push air through rather than pull it. I don't like the idea of having two fans so close together. Let's quickly clean off the CPU here. And yes, this is in fact a 7700K. And now here we go, the moment of truth. Do we have socket damage? There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, we've got, we've got socket damage. Let me go ahead and remove the graphics card. We'll get this motherboard out of here so that I can show you a bit better what we're working with. And it'll also make it easier for me to try to bend these pins back into position. Nice and gently now, here we go. And here is what we're working with. We've got one up here to the top right. We've got one a little further down and then one off to the bottom left. Of course, a few others might pop up while I'm looking at this a bit longer, but uh, yeah, th this was, Definitely 
in bad shape, and I don't blame the system for not wanting to post. So this entire assembly here with the cover and the uh, screws on the motherboard, the owner tried removing all of this to get the CPU cooler installed, which of course he didn't have to do. And I think during this process, he maybe stabbed a couple of the pins with a screwdriver. I'm not sure how this happened, but we're gonna have to try to fix this if we want to save the board. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to buy a replacement on eBay. Now, I've had no better success when bending LGA pins back into place than with a sewing needle, something that is at least the size of the pins, maybe even smaller, and that is as sturdy as the pins, of course, made of metal, preferably. Uh, this is just, this is a tried and true tool in my toolkit, even though uh, it's a little unconventional, I found it works the best. Some folks will swear by things like toothpicks. I just don't like how large toothpicks are. They need to be very, very slim in order to mess with these very, very tiny pins. Now I'm gonna start with this section here. I don't know yet if any of these pins are bent beyond repair. It's possible that when I try bending these back, one of them snaps off, and if that happens, the board's toast. Like, there's there's no way to repair something like that with conventional tooling, so. But some of these are bent pretty badly. It looks like I've gotten most of the angling right there. There's one pin that's a little low. We wanna make sure that we address that, because if it's too low, it won't actually make contact with the underside of the chip. Lower section looks a lot better now. It is not perfect. There are still a few, uh, in particular, height issues. I'm just struggling to get underneath certain pins, pull them up without, you know, bending up other pins that are in, uh, in their original position, so I don't wanna make the thing worse. I do think we'll manage a post though with this, uh, and uh, I think long term it'll be okay. Uh, we're gonna shift our attention now to the upper section. So one of these pins here, it looks like is missing. It's actually not missing, thankfully. It's just bent all the way backwards, which again, I'm not sure how that was managed, but we're gonna have to be very gentle with this one. It's like it did bend back, thankfully it didn't snap off. I'm not sure how I pulled that off, but uh, I don't know if it's going to post in its current position. I might need to push it down a bit more. Now, while I'm in the process of attempting to refurbish this socket, it's 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 getting there. I do want to state for the record that um, I don't want anyone to be afraid of submitting a fix or flop form for a rig that's broken, if they know for a fact they damaged their rig. User error happens all the time. Heck, I've blown up entire systems in the past because I thought that I was using the correct power supply cables when in fact I wasn't. That's user error. That's totally on me. That's not the fault of any manufacturer. And I don't want anyone to be afraid to submit a form because they might get caught in the act. I might catch them, you know, breaking something in the moment. Like here, this is very clearly user error. It's not the end of the world. In fact, if you disclose this up front, I'm more than likely going to pick you. The more info you can tell me, the better, the quicker I can fix your rig and get it back to you. Um, it just, it helps everybody involved. And all, honestly, the stories like this one here, where he was you know, removing the entire uh, retention mechanism and whatnot, like, that's valuable information, especially for first time builders who might be watching this playlist. Now I know at first glance, you're probably thinking this is not gonna post as is. I am not totally happy with the way this one turned out. There is a pretty large gap there up in the top left. Uh, and that exists because one of the pins, in fact, the one that was bent all the way backwards, is still not totally flush uh, from a depth perspective or a height perspective. So looking at it like this, the height of the, of the pin is uh, it's not where I want it to be, but I don't want to press on it anymore uh, for risk of that pin completely snapping off. So I'm gonna try for a post as is. I think everything else looks pretty good. I'd say we've got a 75% chance that this works. Carefully drop the CPU back in, hopefully for the last time, but we'll see. I'm not gonna put the cooler back on yet because we may need to take it right back off if this doesn't work, but I do have the graphics card reconnected uh, and I've got the primary components powered up. So the eight pin here, the 24 pin, the eight pin up top. We're gonna jump the power pins at the bottom and try for a picture. This is for all the marbles. Power on at the rear. Power on up front. Okay, and of course we're not gonna leave this on for too long so the CPU won't get very hot. Just wanna see if we can get a post. The CPU is actually warming up now, which is, which is great. It wasn't doing that before, and look at that. 
that's a post. So now we'll apply some new thermal paste, good old thermal grizzly cryonaut. That's a bit much, but no, not a problem. And we'll set the CPU cooler back in this time with the fan, well, in the conventional spot. He can always switch it back if he wants. I was about to reinstall this Wi-Fi card where he had it originally, which was this, uh, upper slot, a very small one, but it was pressed right against the graphics card. So in order to give this a bit more breathing room, I'm gonna move the card down to this largest slot. Remember the PCI slot itself doesn't have to match up size wise to the PCI adapter, whatever uh, component you're connecting. As long as it's PCIe and not something like PCI, then you'll still be fine. This will give this card again, more breathing room and uh, we'll just help space things out a bit more. Also gonna take the time to redo a lot of this cable management because it's bothered bothering me like a lot. For example, this CPU power cable here could easily be routed through this rubber grommet where it is supposed to be, but for some reason it's routed through that one. So it looks a bit tacky. And of course this cluster of cables can just be stuffed behind the motherboard tray or where it belongs. So here's what we're starting with and -wee, what a world of difference cable management alone can make. We can actually see our basement now and we can see the empty space below our MATX motherboard. This being a mid tower, we're gonna have some dead space there. Not a big deal. We also cleaned up this eight pin running to the graphics card. And of course up top here, just looking a lot more professional. I think the viewer was kind of just like part swapping and troubleshooting on his own a bit before he gave the system to us, which is partly why it looks so rough to begin with. And the final thing to do then is to power the system on officially with everything reconnected for the last time. We're gonna make sure that not only the system posts, but also that it loads into Windows because I believe one of these drives that we've reconnected does have a Windows boot partition on it. I'm crossing everything I got. It would be great to fix the system and not have to put any hardware into it. That's always a, a pleasant surprise. Let's see here, power on. All right, well, it turns on again, or at least back to square one. And I do hear the hard drives initializing. There we go. That's a post. We'll just grab a keyboard real quick and try to load into Windows. A few moments later. Oh, and would you look at that? We've loaded straight into Windows 11. That is, that's perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. It also loaded up very quickly. So I think the boot partition is on his only SSD. He also has two hard disk drives, though I imagine those are just for general storage and maybe games. There is no greater feeling than knowing you were able to fix a computer with your own two hands. You didn't have to throw hardware at it or anything crazy like that. It just took a sewing needle. That was the only instrument we needed. And uh, I imagine most folks have at least one of those laying around. It is highly recommended. I've probably fixed maybe 10 of these sockets to date with a sewing needle and all of them, as far as I know, have been successful and are still working today. So I'd wager this is a pretty permanent solution unless he starts tinkering with the socket again, this should last for several, several years. And again, I've been successful with this method so many times that I can very confidently recommend the technique to anyone else who might run into a socket related issue. Usually fix your videos are a bit more involved than this one, but uh, they're not always gonna be as complicated as some and uh, I'll take I'll take this any day of the week. This is a great learning experience. For those who are dealing with LGA sockets, please be very careful, be very mindful of those pins. They are so, so fragile. And if one or two of those things break off, you're pretty much SOL. You gotta get a new motherboard that could cost you a hundred plus USD. Heck, even if I had to buy like a replacement one of these, and this is, again, a seven, eight year old motherboard, it's still gonna cost me about 60, 80, 100 bucks, especially if you want like an unlocked chipset board. It's crazy how well the older motherboards like that hold their value. I think just because so few of them are still in working order, very clean condition. This playlist is intended to be a little more informative than entertaining, but it doesn't always work out that way. This one was cut and dry and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. If you wanna support us by clicking the red subscribe button, that would be hugely appreciated. Consider giving us a like as well or a dislike, whatever you're feeling. And if you wanna leave a comment down below, letting us know what you'd like to see next on the channel, that would be appreciated as well. Thank you so much for your viewership and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.